Hi everyone, welcome back to another Cut Above with Chris. Daily shaves at the moment, really just to pass some time and allow me to do something that I enjoy because self isolate is bullshit and I'm over it. Anyway, soap is Pereira Shavery. Now this is Aromatherapy Oud. The reason I'm going for this is because I'll be putting on an Oud parfum afterwards, which is called Oud Blend and I can't remember who makes it. I want it in a giveaway. It's a beautiful scent. I've actually got it on at the moment, or remnants of it. I'm sniffing the lid. See, I'm losing my fucking mind at all, I tell you. It's absolutely driving me bonkers. There it is, the ingredients list. Pereira Shavery do not have the cleanest set of ingredients. But let me tell you, the scent on this is absolutely fantastic. And it is very, very oud-like. It does have a reminiscent sort of scent to that of the stallion oud. I can smell the oud in this, I can smell it in the oud blend, I can smell it. I, I, I pretty much know what the scent of oud wood or agar wood is now. You've heard oud a lot today. But it's a fantastic scented silk. I really enjoy it. I don't know why I keep wetting my hands. My head's not in it today. I had about three hours sleep last night. Got to sleep about, I think it was about 3.50 in the morning. And I was back up to go and see the doctor. Right, let us, I've got my soap soaking. See that water in there. It's only been soaking for two minutes. I'm just going to pour that straight in the sink. The brush for today is the Wolf Whiskers Green Apple with the flutes on the bottom. And now this has got a Becky top with an Odyssey handle, I think it is from memory. Odyssey base Becky top. And it's got a 25mm Black Wolf Ultra fan knot. These are no longer available. This is one of my favourite knots. It's for a synthetic, it has got an absolute shit ton of backbone. Excellent for head shaves, great for face shaves as well. It's quite a messy knot. It does make a fair amount of mess, but it's a fantastic knot. So here we go. Oh, it's just a beautiful scent. It is very much a sweet oud scent. It's like oud that's been sweetened, that's what it's like. It doesn't have that super earthiness to it that you get, that oud adds to most things. I should really say agar wood because it's easier to say I think and it's easier to understand what I'm saying. But oud is O U D wood. Now this one is a jet black silk. It does have activated charcoal in there. Whether or not that makes a difference to anything, I don't know. I also use this activated charcoal alcohol free mouth rinse, oral rinse. The reason I use that, it's not so much for my dental health. I actually suffer from bad breath, pretty bad breath. Drinking coffee doesn't help. And the fact that I don't eat anything before 12 o'clock every day doesn't help. But my breath is pretty bad, so. It does affect me, and certainly in social circumstances, I always carry mints and chewing them. So I'm generally always chewing or sucking mints. But yeah. Now, more than anything, is probably a good time to sort of talk about mental health. Now, for those of you that have been watching my channel a long time, if you watch my channel from the beginning, you'll know I went through, <laughs> went through my fair share of mental struggles. A lot of it self-inflicted. A lot of it out of my control, and I've had to sort of deal with it and, and get through it. Now, just to give you the, the bigger picture of what's in my head right now, or an idea of what's going through my head right now. Back in September, I broke my arm. Well, I was assaulted, essentially, at soccer, at football. And as a result, I broke my arm. Now, that was September. It's now the end of April. We'll be getting May. I think May starts in a week and a half, something like that. So, It's been really wearing me down. It really has. It's, this has been such a long, long process of going through a rehab, which hasn't helped me. Do you know, uh, buying things that I don't need, spending money I don't really have, and having no real control over that uh, is, is uh, I don't know, I can't, I can't really explain it. For those of you out there that have gone through it with regards to spending, 
when I'm feeling blue or down or depressed or whatever you want to call it, buying shit I don't need is the forefront of my mind. It's where I go. Materialistic things take my mind off it for a while and then all of a sudden it's back again and I buy something else and then it comes back and then I buy something else. But this has been different. Look at the colour of that silk. It's grey. This experience, this this thing I'm going through at the moment. Now, some of you guys out there that are older, it may have happened when you were younger, it may have happened when you were less than 30, have been through what's commonly known as the midlife crisis. Now, I honestly believe that I'm going through a forced midlife crisis because I'm in a situation whereby the thing that I love, the, the thing that I love only less than my wife and my kids, football, has been jeopardised for life because it's put me in a position now whereby if I can't get healed, I can't go back to work. If I can't go back to work, I'll lose my job. If I lose my job, it's a very good paying job. And in my position, with what I've got in terms of education and things like that, I don't really have the, the opportunity now to go and get a job that pays a similar wage without going to work in mines and things like that, which even then I still don't have the ability to do, I don't have really any. I've got no qualifications that, that give me anything. Now, that doesn't make me useless, I'm not I'm not saying that. But the position I'm in now has me contemplating, well, I'm probably going to have to kill the pin on football. You know, it's not going to stop me keeping fit, I can still go and run around and kick a ball with the kids, yes, that's great. But when it's been a big part of your life, all your life, since you were five years old, and it's been your main fitness, fitness thing, and it's, it's, it's hard to tell you, it's a, it's a real, it's a really strange sensation and a, and a horrible thought process and feeling, and it gives me a bit of a understanding as to what professional athletes would go through when, when the time comes to pull the pin on the, the club football or whatever they do, because they can no longer sustain the levels or they're constantly getting niggling injuries or they're constantly getting major injuries. Now, when coupled with the injury itself, I've got no strength in my left hand. The tendon has completely severed from my ulna, which connects to the radius. I need their operation to connect them back up. The doctor, or the surgeon, the specialist, albeit said that he is going to perform the operation, was basically telling me that I should prepare now for the, for the likelihood that I probably won't be going back to work. Now, when you couple the fact that, I'm saying couple, it's more than a couple, this is just a multitude of things. I've essentially been self-isolating since September last year. I am fucking sick to the back teeth of hearing people whinge about having to self-isolate for a month. Well, I've had to self-isolate, this virus is a pain in the ass, I've had a month now. Oh, fuck me. Seriously. There are people way worse off than me that have... Uh, uh, housebound and stuck in the house, stuck in a bed, stuck in a wheelchair all the life. Fuck me. Sit at home, put the TV on and fucking get on with it. That's just, just as simple as that. Protesting? Are you joking? Are you having a laugh? I am absolutely sick to the back teeth of it. Now, I've been trying to steer clear of news. But seeing stuff like that makes me worse. It makes me think, what the fuck? I, I'm, I'm stuck in this situation at the moment where I can't, I, I'm not allowed to work because I'm under insurance. I cannot work at all. I'm not even supposed to be hanging pictures in my own house. I'm not supposed to do anything, paid or unpaid. So it's, look at this ladder, how good is this ladder? It's phenomenal. So mentally, I am not in an ideal place. I always talk openly on my channel, I always talk openly just in general. I don't talk openly on my family, unfortunately. I tend to bottle things up. I am literally at the moment just a constant erupting volcano. I have no control over my emotions, I've got no control over my anger, I've got no control over anything and it's really, really overtaking my life. So I understand people will be frustrated, stuck at home, self-isolating, at home with the kids all the time. It, look, it's no picnic, it's hard, it is hard. We are social animals, we want to be out, we want to be... be for the biggest part, in general, the biggest majority of us want to be out there socialising and, and being part of the world. Right, Lee Fraser, 
going to continue shaving while I'm talking shit. I've got the same blades in here. The Derby Usta. Those ones there. Try it the right way around. There we go. I'm not sure whether this is back to front or the right way around now. I need to check my videos because I think I hit a setting by accident on my phone. I'm not sure. So I've got three of them in there. This is the third shave of them. I'm just checking the longevity of them, but they're also giving me excellent shaves. So here we go. Straight against the grain. One day's growth. I do still have a bump on the back of my neck and on, on my crown, so no doubt I'll open that up. It's been annoying me. I keep picking at it. Mainly because I've got nothing else to worry my mind. I am reading a lot, trying to keep my mind on things or off things, should I say. But sometimes you've got to face your problems head on and try and get the help, so yeah. But then, recently my gran was taken into hospital back in Scotland and because of the self isolating situation in the UK and Scotland, my family aren't able to see her. She suffers from severe dementia to the point that she doesn't actually know who anyone is and sometimes she knows who you are for a split second and then forgets the very next minute. She'll ask you a question 3,000 times and you give her the same answer 3,000 times and it's a fresh question for her the next time she asks you. So, she's been in hospital now for a couple of weeks. She's not going to really recover from what's happened. She's got a hernia that's twisted around her bowels and it's burst a bit and she's slowly being poisoned to death basically which is horrible so she, she's she's comfortable she's under a, in a, under a lot of sort of pain meds and antibiotics so she's comfortable as far as we're aware but it's at the point now where they want to put her into a home and because we can't get to the hospital or well, my family can't at least and they can't go to any homes to check them out and sort of vet them, you know, money's no object. But because they can't do that, the likelihood is the social workers will get involved. And the decision will be taken out of her family's hands. I have no doubt she'll just end up in a government care home because it's easier. So I've got that in my mind. I'm just not in a good mental place at the moment. I haven't been for a long time and to be honest with you I've probably been in denial with it and trying to do the manly thing you know and just get through it and don't tell anyone anything. But it's at a point now where it's seriously affected me with my family. You know I've got I've got three kids at home, a 14 year old and 11 year old. And a uh, nine-year-old, uh, no, Max is, yeah, Max is ten. Mitchell's twelve next month, so a fourteen, eleven, and ten-year-old at home who need as much support as I do at the moment. Really, they they are way more active than me mentally and physically active. They need to be, they need to be stimulated. And really, I've got about as much motivation as a pebble at the moment. Well, I can't be asked doing fucking anything. That's just where I'm at. I need to try and motivate myself, but it's very difficult when you're in this mental health state, a state of mind where everything's hard all the time. You know, so just simple things like getting a glass of water for the wife. Can you get a glass of water? I'm, I'm thirsty, I'm doing my work. My mental process is now get fucked to yourself. <laughs> it's the sad reality of it. And it's hard to say, now that I'm saying it, it sounds fucking ludicrous, it sounds absolutely ridiculous. It makes me sound like an absolutely horrible person. And I don't think I am. I'm a very, at core, in my core, at heart, I'm a very caring person. And I would give anyone my last. You know, and, you know if someone's struggling, you know, I've, I've had people that I've known through football that have been struggling financially and I've offered, well, I have done, I've given them got a message there, I don't know what that was. I've given them money to get them through and you know there's, there's a lot of stuff's happened in my life through other people and I'm thankful of it. And in my own way, 
I give back as best I can. A lot of the time it's just being an ear for someone, you know. I, I've always been a good listener, I think. You know, it's the, the greatest form of communication is listening. Just no doubt about it. There's nothing worse than having to try and pour your heart out to someone and they just keep interrupting you or they're not even paying attention at all. That's me at the moment. And that's where my mindset is. I'm not I'm not my usual sort of empathetic, sympathetic person. I'm, I'm a very, very angry person at the moment. That, but we did the, the usual, you know, that if you've been there before, you, you fill in the form and they work out just based on simple questions where your stress levels, anxiety levels and your depression levels are. So at the moment, they go up to 17 on the scale that I've just done. My stress levels are 17 out of 17, so extremely severe. <laughs> my depression level is at severe and my anxiety levels aren't too bad, which is good because anxiety was something that used to get me quite badly years ago. I don't need to lather my whole head again because there's barely anything left. I'm just going to lather the bits where I can feel things. This, this, this soap is really, really good. So you'd be sitting there thinking, shit, you're pouring your fucking woes onto me here. I'm, I'm not doing this to try and bring people down, you know. I'm doing this to tell you that there is help out there. I've been there twice in my life so far where I've had to seek professional help and it helped, you know. It, there's no quick fix. There's no lifelong fix as far as I'm concerned. This will be something I would deal with for the rest of my life, on and off. I don't think I will ever be in a position where I would say I am cured. I don't think it's something you cure. I think it's something that you heal. And I think you've always sort of, in, in the way of healing it, is to open up and get rid of it, get it out of your system, try and talk your way through it, you have to, otherwise it'll eat you up for the rest of your life. Now, this coronavirus has been a big wake-up call to the world, it's been a big wake-up call to pretty much everyone. It has affected, I would, I would say, nearly, nearly everyone. It's affected nearly everyone in some way or another, I would say. And some people would deal with it better than others. I came into this self-isolating probably the worst time of my life, really, in terms of where I was mentally and my thought process with this injury. It's a funny thing, you know, I say it's a funny thing. I always thought about becoming a psychologist or a counsellor. And yet the funny thing is I spend most of my time seeing them. I'm a very negatively geared person, I always have been. But for some reason, my life experiences and the crap I've been through and the people I've spoken to and the things I've seen, I've seen things that nobody ever wants to see in my police career and Stuff like that. God, what a shave. This soap's fantastic. I've always had an ability to, to be able to try and make other people feel better. <laughs> and not necessarily myself. Fantastic shave. It is funny, you know, I, I have I have a shave. And I do actually feel better. 
I feel better talking on you as well, to be honest with you. I know you guys are having a bit of my shit, but I think in a lot of ways, and the funny thing, that I keep saying the funny thing is, I don't know why it's a funny thing. I know somewhere in the world someone watches my videos and knowing that they're not the only person going through these things can take some sort of goodness out of these videos. I mean, to be honest with you, if I didn't have shaving at the moment, I wouldn't really have any hobbies, I wouldn't have anything to give me a choice, give me a stimulation during the day. You know, I go into my soap drawers and I go through my 50 plus soaps and pick the one out that smells good, makes me feel good at that moment, gives me a good vibe. Go and pick my brush. It, it gives me purpose for that moment in time. And really, as much as, as I used to think, I can't wait to retire, I can't wait to stop working. I can't, honestly, I'm sick of working. But when you can't work, when you actually cannot work because you're told you can't, it's it's like shit. What do you do? There's only so much golf and one player table tennis that you can do. You know, playing pool, online gaming. I'm oh, I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> it's like. Things that I enjoy doing because they were a small part of everyday life, you know, like looking all over the place here. Um, I'm losing the joy in things that, that I used to find enjoyment in. Now, tiredness is a major factor in that, it's a big killer of that. Pereira Shavery Aromatherapy Oud is a fantastically scented soap. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful, but it makes a great lather. Now, like I said, the ingredients list on this one are spot on. There was a couple of things in there that really don't need to be in there. I think it's got, it's got titanium dioxide. Can't remember. Yeah, that's one of them. There's a couple of numbers in there as well that I don't know what they are. I don't really care. I'll, you know, it's, excuse me. You got to die something, right? If, it, if I die of soap-related death, then it's probably been a good death, really, because I really enjoy this sort of stuff. The brush was my Wolf Whiskers Green Apple, twenty-five mil Black Wolf Fan Knot, Ultra Fan Knot. It's a fantastic brush. I absolutely love it. And Craig Stanway over at Facebook recently got a, a green that damn rope handle and it is phenomenal. It's nicer than that. But he's put a rhodium knot in it and it looks spectacular. And he hasn't lost a hair from his rhodium knot. So good on you mate, I'm, I'm happy for you because so far I've had two shaves in a row with mine. I've been brushing it, combing it and all that sort of thing. And I've had two shaves in a row without losing a hair. So I've been quite happy with that. The razor, nothing better on the market for head shaves for me. The leaf razor, it's fantastic. And these blades, I think, might just be my go-tos. The Derby Ooster, very cheap. I think they're about 12, they're about 12 or 15 dollars, I think, for a hundred pack. They're pretty sharp. They don't show too much blade. You can see there's very minimal blade sticking out of these, the three blades, which is great. So it means I'm getting, I can put a bit more pressure on it actually gets me a closer shave with less irritation or I mean next to no irritation that feels absolutely fantastic it really does and with that that's me done and dusted I'm not going to put a post shave on right now I might I don't know I might do a double pump of the old Australian private reserve I don't know actually do you know what I'll put something on let's go with who used this recently Polly College Mr Paul Humphreys here is Humphreys Witch Hazel Citrus. I think he used this in his last shaving video. I think, I'm sure he did. He loves a good whack of citrus. So let's get a good splash of this. I always find Humphreys to give a nice burn as well. like a Almost like a, a mild alcohol burn. This is so close. I'm getting BBS shaves with these blades daily on my head with no real problems. I can't even... I mean, I've got a big, a big red mark on the back of my head where I've been picking at an ingrown hair, which started from the calf, believe it or not. You can probably see it there, it's a cracker. I don't know whether I've got loads of blood in the back of my head, I've not even looked. I think it's all good. Yeah, so Humphreys Citrus. Really nice witch hazel, this one. It's long past its used by date, I think. Has it got a used by date on it? I'm sure it does. Actually, funny enough, these ones don't. 
I know the thing is, thing is I've definitely got a use by date. He's a he's a long gone use by date, I think. I could have sworn it was. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I'm losing my mind. It might actually be the medicated one for some reason. I don't know. Anyway, stay safe, drive safe. Don't drink and drive. I'll catch you guys for the face shave. Cheers.